You're listening to DraftKings Network. Welcome to the Big Sui, presented by DraftKings. Why are you listening to this show? The podcast that seems very similar to the other Dan Lebitard podcast. I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize for that. <laughs> in fact, the only difference seems to be this imaging. I have been tempted in restaurants just walking past tables to grab somebody's fries that if they're just there. That hasn't happened to you guys? I've done it. And now, here's the marching man to nowhere, fat face, and the habitual liar. We have a handful of Halloween observations being made around here. Uh, Billy is worried about the future for lazy children Kids and suck. Stugatz. Mm-hmm. Wow. And Stugatz is He's right. popping uh, edibles and mocking uh-huh. parents who still have to wander around with their kids and saying that he, he's making the claim that Halloween is better without kids than with them. So it is. This was my second Halloween without my kids, okay? But last year, I still lived in a hot spot in my neighborhood. And there's an obligation that comes with living on one of the hot blocks, a hot spot. You have to get the house decorated. You have to make it an experience for the kids, even when your kids are off to college. But I've moved. And I've moved to an older part of my neighborhood, okay? A quieter part of my neighborhood. But Halloween without the kids. There is hope for you, Mike. There's hope for you, Billy. There is hope for all of you, okay? I am telling you, Halloween without the kids, so much better than Halloween with the kids. Six o'clock, gummy goes in. Seven o'clock, we're in the golf cart. Big G&T for me, glass of wine for Abby. As, it's, a, uh, as a passenger. Exactly, yes. With a chauffeur. You have yes, a chauffeur. we had a driver. Chauffeur. We had a driver. Yeah. Yes, we, had, we had a driver. <laughs> yes, we did. We had, thank you. We had a driver. And so then I bring a little dog walker with me. And we light it up. The driver's driving the golf cart. We light it up in the back seat, me and Abby, and Abby says to me, what are you doing? You just took a gummy. And I said, Abby, nothing makes the gummy land like a dog walker an hour and 10 minutes later. Washing it down. Not and that so makes then, the drugs work like more drugs. More drugs, yeah. <laughs> You're going to die in a very stupid way. Probably. <laughs> While so, you kill Lucy. So the driver Hit takes us trolley. <laughs> So the driver takes us to the hot spots in the neighborhood where I used to live. And what we did is we watched people who were us 10 to 12 years ago, and we just laughed at all of them, every single one of them. I'm like, Abby, look at that dad trying to get his kid to wait until he gets home to eat his Halloween candy. It was great. This honestly sounds sad. (laughs) It was. Like, if I was walking around with my kids and I see just two random middle-aged old people in a golf cart, exact laughing at me, I'd be like, what is wrong with them? Stu, you're completely right. Because yesterday, I went trick-or-treating in one of those big neighborhoods that... No, he's right, because there's a bunch of golf carts that are all tricked out, have the Halloween lights on them, smoke machines or whatever, and those are the people having the most fun. The people walking sucks. Right. <laughs> Can you guys look up? Is this a up- South Florida thing? Just it's golf a- carts yeah, it's everywhere? It's I was mad yesterday yeah. because I was saying these kids need to, like, earn this candy because I was in a parade of wagons yesterday, Dan. Like, I brought a wagon because I had a bunch of crap that I needed to carry, and I'm like, I don't want to carry that for blocks and blocks and blocks. And what happens when you have a wagon? The kids jump in it. So we had like three or four wagons, and kids are just being wagoned from house to house. They just get down and get the candy. It's like, hey, walk. If you're getting candy, walk. We're not going to be dragging you around in wagons. What's going on here? And then I felt judged because I didn't know all the people that I was with. And I was walking with my dad who was carrying the wagon. And I was trying to have this conversation with him. But I didn't want to be the rude person that's criticizing other people that are doing the wagon situation. Well, I'm doing it myself, honestly. I thought I was smart. I was like, you know what? This is really smart, Billy. You should take the beach wagon out. You can put everything in there. If Mia gets tired, just hop her in the wagon. She can roll on. We can go on with more candy. And then I saw the other dads with the wagons. I'm like, oh, I'm a dad now. I'm not smart. I'm lazy. Do you believe we are raising entitled children? Oh, yeah. The world's going to end. Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, there are a number of different reasons the world is going to end. I know, but these kids are going to be too lazy to even swim when the water comes and overtakes them. <laughs> I wasn't even talking about the water oh, this time. Oh, I thought time. McKay was coming this time, up. Yeah, no, this time, it was, this time it was not water. 
This time I was just thinking about all of the other ways, including trolleys, that one can die. Can you please look this up for me? Because I don't believe that trolleys are responsible uh, for a lot of deaths, but I may have this wrong. I am, uh, Lucy is claiming, uh, Lucy is claiming that trolleys work at a rate of speed that uh, is underrated. It was a trolley bus. So it was a bus that looked like a trolley. And it was very traumatic. I got anxiety for like two weeks after just crossing that intersection because that thing moved so fast that it had to trigger the emergency brake and then was stuck there for like 20 minutes. Can you guys find for me as much information as you possibly can on trolley deaths? I am now obsessed with finding out. I assume San Francisco's catbird. Uh, that would that'd be a very good guess as a favorite, uh, but I just well, when that comes in, I'm going to be so psyched. So many people are getting murdered by lot. trolleys and I mean, SF. It's a lot. Do you think you'll be as happy? Put it on the poll. Who was happier, David Sampson talking about firing managers or Mike Ryan uh, imagining San Francisco pedestrians dying by trolley? Can you get for me, because uh, a lot of people were talking yesterday about Wembenyama. They win late, Stugas. They were down by 20. There were a couple of back-and-forth dunks, a couple of ridiculous shots Wembenyama made. Mike Ryan continues to be the nation's loudest Wembenyama hater. Um, I don't understand why you it's guys so are— weird. It's so no, no, no. weird. You guys are the weird ones. Yeah. The guy's eight feet tall. He does not need your help. This is not a lovable underdog story. You guys are essentially just the guy that is the Cowboys, Yankees, Laker fan. You're just a bunch of front runners. And excuse me if I think it's an unfair advantage and I don't want to throw my support additionally to this guy. I I can't believe what you guys are doing. Unfair advantage. It is unfair. Jokic is an unfair advantage. I don't see you, you know, clamoring him to sit down. I'm not a big Jokic guy. I think it's also cheating. But the weird part about this is this isn't like an on-air bit that you're just doing. Like, we walk in and you're just screaming about Wemby in the middle of the office. Like, people are trying to eat. He's like, have you seen the video? Wemby, yes. Have you seen the video? He lays it up right here. No, no, no. What happened was, oh, he's a look at look at him he's slender man throw up the video right now he's so funny because he's so he's so big i'm telling you that that height what you're pointing at what you're guffawing at that right there is unfair it's a good costume we were just talking no. about what a, not everyone can pull what. off this costume as he's maybe the one person in the world hey. that can rock this costume oh his hands are and huge he did he did it and yeah. it looked great okay. tell you what next halloween dress up as someone that doesn't have five turnovers a game <laughs> He's 19, Mike. Absolute he liability as a basketball. ball handler. Absolute liability as you a ball handler. You want him to dress up as Steve Nash? I mean, what are you doing? This is the thing, though. It's not a bit. He was doing this during our meeting. I don't understand why you're like, no, he's so listen. tall. Let's root for and, this guy. He's and cheating. even those who wouldn't listen were getting it. <laughs> he... He someone has someone has to be the a person hater? No. To somebody has to be a hater. I'm not a Mike. hater. Yes, I'm protecting you are. the integrity of the game. You're literally a hater. Should not be playing basketball. You don't even like Cooper Flag. Have a higher rim. Seriously, I'm the only person that's like that's not fair. That's not fair. Let's root against this guy because he has all the advantages in the world. You guys are just a bunch of front runners. If you're rooting for Victor Wembanyama, you really are. But then you must also hate LeBron James because he is physically gifted in a yeah. way that makes it unfair Smaller for other people to play basketball against him. He's not eight feet tall, mm. and that's a difference but because what it does make it easier. Yeah, Mike is it right does. about that. There's other yeah. guys the same height in the NBA. No one's that height. Seven four? No one's that height <laughs> with those hands <laughs> and that length. Come on. There, there are a couple. Well, of come rebels. on. Uh, no one's like Shaq that. Shaq was saying last night, we've seen this before, Bull Bull is wandering around. No, finally, yeah, yeah. someone with common sense. We have. <laughs> He should stop uh, no, dribbling the ball. But he says that when Banyama, Shaq does, there was more context to that. He says that when Banyama will be good. He was not actually comparing him to the skills of Bull Bull, but he was saying we have seen this before. But what you're arguing, Mike, you're basically going to Disney World. You are seeing the kids there for the first time, seeing something they've never seen before, and saying to them, why are you rooting for this? Why are you rooting for the big Disney giant? What I'm doing is, I think, I'm a freedom fighter that is signaling the same flares that many people. He is a I'm, so, I'm sounding fighter. a klaxon. Yeah. All right, I'm sounding the klaxon right now about artificial intelligence, wow. climate change, and Victor Wembanyama. You can't. It's it, he's in the same class. It cheats the game. The Disney analogy, Dan, is a really good one because, like, Mickey is the biggest of the mice I've ever seen. Like, look at a normal mouse. A normal-sized mouse couldn't pull off this kingdom. Yeah. And also, how is Pluto? Who's a dog? 
<laughs> smaller than Mickey Mouse. Well, and there's the whole Goofy thing too, but Goofy's confusing because is Goofy a dog, but is dating Clarabelle the cow? It's like an interspecies thing there. But he, here, here is what's happening <laughs> with Mike. It's not now that Mike is afraid of because I don't think people are actually rooting for Wemby. I think they're just awed by seeing something that doesn't have – any kind of relation to anything you've seen from a human being athletically before. But what Mike is worried about is if that becomes dominant, it ruins the whole sport. Like, it, he will have such an advantage Thank over you. everybody. Thank you. Like so if, you guys are worried about no. the sport being ruined. Yes. That's just Mike hating on some yes. random that's player. all I'm doing. He okay. seems like a nice guy, fun-loving. Yeah. I, I understand why all of you are falling for it. I really do. We thought this about Giannis a couple of years ago. It did or not KD. ruin the sport. Yeah, well, he can't make a free throw. Thankfully, there's something. <laughs> we got to find the Achilles heel. Right now, it's turnovers. It's all we have. <laughs> KD is four inches smaller than Wemby. You, I don't see you clamoring for him to stop because, oh, he's ruining the game. Yeah, that, that's four inches. Total. Four inches is nothing. You know that. Oh! Can you guys put up, you uh, can you put up, please, the photograph last night? Because a lot of people were enjoying uh, the physical length of both of these human beings. And I, I know a lot of people are celebrating. Look at KD, how amazing he is that he could make that shot over the outstretched arm and the giant hand of Wembenyama. But my takeaway from that was, holy shit, I've never seen someone that size who could guard KD because that is a, con Stay with them, that right? is a contested <laughs> shot. I know everybody's looking at what Kevin Durant is I doing mean, there. And look, he's barely off the floor. Imagine when he learns how to jump straight up with both hands. <laughs> this is a problem, guys. It looks like a Photoshop where you would extend his arm by like pushing it forward, but it's actually his real arm. I've never feared a minus three more. Uh, he can't make threes yet either. No, and he keeps taking them. And he's got a good coach over there. Honestly, I know you you want to you want right, to go for the temptation of him bringing the ball up court because it looks good. <laughs> yeah. But if Pop knows anything, if just knows just anything. fundamentals. Oh, Keep him in the post right. and teach him how to be a big man to throw two hands yeah. up there and then add those dimensions to his game. You're good. So you can save the guy's career, which I don't want to be good. Yeah. I want to be very clear about that. You're you need telling, to root against us. You're this. telling Pop how to coach his play. I don't think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> okay. I really don't. Jessica, why is he lost the plot? This is the worst bit that's it's, not a bit. It's not a bit. It's not a bit. It's so insane. I, I, he, again, he seems like a very Even nice guy. Even for this show. Yeah. He seems like a very nice guy, but the fact that you're all rooting for this, it's like a Fisher-Price oh, hoop up there. Can you I, admit I it's a good costume? <laughs> I won't even give him that. Oh you got to be kidding he doesn't, Hater. he doesn't need more support. Hey, everybody. Happy football season. It's Mike, and let me tell you what I do from kickoff to the final whistle. I have a Miller Lite in my hand. I just don't go wrong with it. I learned from experience. There is only one light beer worthy of our national obsession because what's the point of having a beer if it doesn't taste like beer? You don't want to spend any time while you're watching football thinking about what you're drinking. And with the dependable flavor of Miller Lite, you know you don't have to worry about it because it's only got 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12-ounce serving with a smooth taste and a crisp, clean finish. You'll get all the taste that you crave without the calories. A light, less filling beer that tastes great in football? There's there's just no top in that, folks. At least not for me. This season, do what I do. Crack open a light beer that hits your taste bud so hard, you feel it in your heart. Make it Miller time all football season long. Get Miller Lite delivered right to your door. Visit MillerLite.com slash Dan, or you can find it pretty much anywhere that sells beer. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Don Lebatard. <laughs> This is largely performative, but we need to establish at least some court. reasonable doubt. Yes, yes exactly. Absolutely. Please go to the top, everyone, with the please story where he pays more than you do. Stugats. I always like leaving Dan on time. Because <laughs> he's so vulnerable, I just unfairly fade down the chicken to just leave Everyone's him by stops. himself. This is the Don Lebatar show with the Stugats. I just got to see behind the curtain at one of the magician's great tricks. Stugatz is no longer here. He has a golf outing with Chris Cody and Bob Does Sports on the company dime. Stugatz is uh, golfing and 
He was supposed to be here for a couple of hours, but this is the magic at work I just saw. He has his backpack on. He is clearly leaving. And I ask him, are you leaving? And he points over his shoulder and says, Mike told me to leave. And then uh, Mike uh, comes in here and I witness him saying to Stugatz, I didn't tell you to leave. And he's like, yeah, you did. And Mike was like, nope. Just saw that you put your backpack on, and that's pretty much a sign that you're leaving. Because why would you sit in the seat if you weren't leaving? So he's going to golf. Uh, Billy, you're familiar with his work in this area. Well, this is actually a great trick that was pulled today because he said to everyone all week that he was not coming at all today because he had to go golf. So then what happens is he comes for an hour, so he's doing everyone else a favor. And also, the person golfing with him today is Chris Cody, who couldn't be here because he was going to golf. So now by him coming for an hour, it seems like Chris Cody could have been here for an hour but didn't come today. And I don't know that it was ever communicated to Chris that Stugatz changed his mind and decided to come today when he couldn't originally come today, came for an hour. So we should say thank you for coming for an hour, but then leaves even though no one told him to leave. A magic trick. He looks better than Chris Cody, looks like he cares more. Chris Cody clearly deserves the time off because he's tired from making that Halloween costume that was a fork in the road. David said that was the best costume, so... (laughs) My favorite part about going in there confused because he he his whole argument for me telling him to leave was remember when you said are you leaving he thought that that was me telling him yeah. go ahead and leave well, apparently he did technically <laughs> say leave are you le- are yeah. you leaving I, I don't understand he also said he was going to be here for the entirety of the big suey yet one segment in he says goodbye it's it's all about intonation you know in print it all sounds the same but. It's like, are you leaving? Like, that means like, oh, man, are you leaving? And it's like, are you leaving means get out of here. So how did you say are you leaving? And not the way that he would take it that I told him to leave. Did you text it? Did you see it in print? Because then there's the confusion. He had his backpack up very clearly leaving, and I asked him, hey, are you leaving? And he's like, yeah, you told me to just now when you asked, are you leaving? Yeah. What? They are great mind tricks. Also, what I witnessed was Mike Ryan saying to him, hey, we've only done one segment of Big Suey. And Stugatz looking in his face and saying, so we've done two segments of Big Suey? And it happened just like it, that. It happened just like, just that. like that. And it's and, and it's because his mind is fried from drugs. Wait, to, to be clear. What was the gap in time between you saying one segment and his? I just said, I just did it the yeah. way that, that it happened. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's the way that blow it for happened. blow right there. That's the way it happened. In fact, it made me feel for Mike. Mike, Mike is oddly, we oddly developed more patience as he's more tired with all of the dysfunction around here than he's ever been. I was oddly surprised that Mike, after saying that quickly, wasn't befuddled or stunned because I was standing next to it to go to have conversationally happen. Mike Ryan tell Stugatz we've done one segment of Big Suey and Stugatz clap his hands as he's leaving and say, so we've done two segments of Big Suey? That's how that happened. I, as an outside observer, I don't know if it's that he's developed more patience or he's giving an F less. That's, a, that's the one. It's probably that one. <laughs> that's the like, one. Here's the thing. They if look the same. But because if we're gonna, if we're gonna kind of yeah. co- peel back the fourth wall. Ooh, peel let's it. do it. Peel it. A means here. So Sugats gets up and a means slides in. Like a little convenient. I mean, it's pretty great. <laughs> it's pretty great. I that, didn't say that. That he emerges. I'm just from saying, the Mike, ha- Mike has options. Here. <laughs> it's certainly an upgrade from an honesty standpoint. <laughs> um, well, but he's. It might not be an upgrade from a delirious standpoint because Amin came in here and looked at me, and when I looked in his eyes, he looked a bit crazed, and he was wearing yesterday on him, whatever it is that happened yesterday. I've been wanting to talk to him about this James Harden trade. So we've done two segments of Big Suey now. The James Harden gets what he wants tour is really amazing to watch. What are you spreading your arms Uh, for uh, as if this is your victory lap? It is my victory lap because months ago when James would say, damn, I'm always a liar. And Damian Lillard showing up to Portland's practice facility and say, I just want to get to know the young guys. That's not how you do it. Do you want something in the NBA as a superstar? You don't ask nicely. You don't try to be polite. You don't go along to get along. You make a big effing mess. And yes, everyone had jokes and the AI memes of fat James Harden not being allowed on the plane by two TSA agents wrestling, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, one guy got to go exactly where he wanted to go 
and one guy didn't. And it goes to show everything that I've been saying from the beginning. If you want something in the NBA, you don't play nice, you don't be a professional, you make a huge effing mess, and that's how you get to where you want to go. Let's get to that sound from all the smoke. Uh, They do a great job on that show and on those adjacent shows. And Kendrick Perkins was on with them and was talking, I think, about the time that they were teammates at OKC. And this is what Kendrick Perkins had to say about that James Harden. This is 14, you know, this This is is his first appearance in the NBA Finals. They lose in five to Miami. So it's about 10 years ago or more around there. Let's see what we've got here. The man James ain't give us shit. And you know why? <laughs> my <laughs> my <laughs> king of diamonds and everything caught a hole in his ass, man. We couldn't get him in. <laughs> see, in San Antonio, look, in San Antonio, he didn't have a damn thing to do. Shit, yeah, my we got to my, yeah, we got some motherfucking Miami shit. It was everything motherfucking do. We couldn't get that motherfucker to buy a bucket in that motherfucker. <laughs> he sure was killing us in San Antonio, bro. God damn. That's tough. Yeah, he had That's to tough. get his rest. In Miami, he couldn't get his rest. Motherfucker was out here <laughs> motherfucking night. <laughs> he, said, he, said, he said he couldn't get his rest. It's that obvious that because San Antonio doesn't have a thriving strip club commerce community james harden plays better there empirically because he can't be as tired you know what the irony is it's always funny to me how players find their rhythm or find their routine right steven jackson who's in that clip played on the 2007 we believe warriors the ones that upset the dallas mavericks in the first round do you remember what happened to them in the second round does anyone remember? They got beat up. They right? got beat up by the Utah Jazz, and they lost in five. That was a great Mavs team, and uh, that was the best record in the league. One of what, like at the time, the only the second eight seed to ever beat a one seed. There hadn't uh, it hadn't happened very often. Yeah, it, it was still a rarity at that point. The third, I believe, the first yeah. was in the Seattle. best of seven. I think it might have been the first because there was the Nuggets, and then the lockout shortened yep. season where the Knicks that beat the Warriors. Beat the team was so much fun. So th- this is. Uh, Apparently that team, their thing was after every game, we're going out. If it was a home game, they went out to, there's a bar in Oracle that they would go to. They had a drink called Simply the Best. It was their signature concoction, and they, would, and they went out hard every night. And so against Dallas, they were going out hard every night and playing great. When they got to Utah, they couldn't go out. And so it messed their rhythm up. And that, that's, they, they say that's why they lost that series, is because they couldn't go out. In the case of James Harden, in Miami, he could go out, and he went apparently too hard, and, and it, it all fell apart. But I believe it as a 23-year-old, 24-year-old, I could see that happening. How about as a 33-year-old, which is what he's doing now and going to Los Angeles? I could see it happening more. Uh, Mike, when you see this happen as someone who's been hurt by Lillard not being in Miami and the course correction of GMs grabbing the power back with Damian Lillard as the central figure, when James Harden does everything he does and has less value at this point in his career than Damian Lillard and gets exactly what he wants, maybe at least in part because he has less value, do you find yourself getting bad, uh, getting mad that Lillard is the only one that didn't get exactly what he wanted? Yeah, I- I've been mad about that for a while, um, that Lillard could never, for the last few years, find the right approach the the not the right approach it's the because, wrong approach well not a, we can all agree it wasn't effective in getting what he wants yeah. and i don't understand how james harden always go uh gets what he wants and all what it does for me as a heat fan just fuels this kooky conspiracy theory that i have as part of the problem is i don't want guys to go to miami now i don't understand why portland would would feel that way being that they're in a different conference but the way that the the lillard thing was covered in the media Let's just look at ESPN and Woj was totally different. Now, Harden, you could argue, is at a similar stage in his career as Lillard. So what is going on here? Fewer takers? Possibly. But for whatever reason, Lillard's pursuit of Miami and Miami's pursuit of Lillard was just covered differently than all these other ones. And it's weird. Why is it different? It can't be different because he's been the most loyal guy. What are the variables at play here? And as a Heat fan, I just think haters. 
haters is what I think. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Pedro Bang agrees with you. Uh, just real quick, I mean, the Clippers are going to be what? James Harden's going to be what? Those are, those are three players and Westbrook. Those are th- yeah. in George Kawhi and James Harden. Those are all guys who need to have the basketball. Do you want me to give you the most optimistic version of why I think this could work? I don't. I'm. I'm not on this. But if, if you ask me to be the most optimistic version of myself. It's worth it for the Clippers to try it, is it not? They're giving up next to nothing for star well, power. Ballmer wants to make them relevant, wants to keep them in the game. It makes sense for them to try it, whether it works or not. It not it's not next to nothing. I think people are it's next to nothing of what's here right now. Those picks which are unprotected, that first round pick in twenty twenty eight, five years from now, which is very likely none of none of these guys are gonna be there to be to see it, right? Um, but in terms of the right now, the biggest thing that James Harden can provide this team is the concept of insurance, right? What has the Clippers' problem been That's for the last point. few years? Right? That's a great, a great point. point. Guys are hurt. Yeah. Guys are unavailable. Guys are not there. So what? You throw enough fragile guys, <laughs> surely one of them's got to be healthy. It's got to cover. <laughs> there, right? J- James Harden is going to have one of these games with nine threes just because Kawhi and Paul George aren't playing. He won't sweat an injury so much. I, honestly, I. <laughs> If they're all healthy, there might be more of an issue than if like they're better three off. Of them. They are legitimately better off if they're not all healthy. <laughs> There's uh, one guy that needs to be healthy <laughs> when it at, at the end, not all season, just at the end. This episode of the Dan Levitard Show with Stugatz is brought to you by KFC's new hot and spicy wings. Get fired up this fantasy season with eight pieces of spicy marinated hand breaded wings for just four ninety nine. Are you kidding me? They're a can't miss call for whatever the fantasy gods throw your way. In the midst of a managerial hot streak, keep it rolling with KFC's new hot and spicy wings. Did you just assemble the worst lineup in fantasy history? Who cares? You can get eight KFC new hot and spicy wings for four ninety nine right now. Marinated in spice, hand breaded to perfection. KFC's new hot and spicy wings are here. Eight pieces for just four ninety nine. It's finger licking good. Don Lebatard. He's like he needs a wheelbarrow like Mike McDaniel. This dog um, <laughs> got a pair. He's really? got a pair. <laughs> Man, does he get a pair? <laughs> My granddaughter sees his schlong. What are says, you talking Jesus about? Says, right. And there says, it "What's you that?" No, she doesn't. No, she did. Your granddaughter. My granddaughter okay. saw his schlong All right, in the enough. kitchen, All and right. she said, "What is that? Right. What is this? A game that's, of Clue?" Okay. And I said, "What's he doing in the kitchen?" Enough. I said, "That's what enough. he pees with." She saw his. Okay. <laughs> how else am I going to explain? Stugatz. It was a little extended. I don't know how why he was so excited. All right, very good, baby. <clears throat> no! Can, we what Can I take there? this out? But it is a baby. <laughs> anyway, he ate my couch. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats. With a giant smile on his face and a delirious look in his eye, Amin came into this studio excited and said, Have you guys talked about what Dabo Swinney did? Tyler. <laughs> the answer to your question is yes. I, I believe it was yesterday's finest segment, just roaring with laughter at um, Amen. a series of uh, condescensions and fury that Dabo uh, unleashed on Tyler, who I Tyler. Was told yesterday we were in hot pursuit of Tyler. We came very close to getting Tyler, but have not yet found Tyler. We want to do the follow-up interview to uh, what Dabo did to Tyler. Tyler. <laughs> so I'm sorry, it's off the table. But what is oh. still on the table for you, I mean, is the magical story of Wait. Connor Stallions. What happened? I just, one thing. Did you guys talk about Tony Elliott? We did not. Oh, so that's my favorite part. About how he discovered Tony Elliott and my got favorite, to play in the game, took us to two national championships. My Tyler. Fa- favorite part is just like, he was like, I took Tony Elliott's bum ass off the street. He ain't even had a pot to piss in, and I made him into a national championship twice. Who could have done that? Tyler. And somewhere, Tony Elliott's like, what has to do with me, man? But just be Tyler. North Carolina, like. I, I'm not that bad. <laughs> like the fact that Tony Elliott's in his office somewhere because where does he coach now? Virginia. 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 He's like in this in his office, and it's like, huh? Oh, Dabo went off. Let's hear this call. And he's like, oh my god, that's classic Dabo. And then he goes into Tony Elliott. Like, Tyler, what does got to do with me? 
me, man. Well, we were laughing more than that at just him listing his credentials and saying, I wanted to be a father and I have three kids. Like, I can imagine his three kids being like, what, Dad? We're just trophies? We're <laughs> the like, media has been very mean to me. <laughs> and I would just like to say that now that the Stanford Cardinals in the ACC, I'd like to see that tree. That tree's got a big old mouth. What? Tyler. What? Hey, yo. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I am Girl, here. Coach is horny. I want her to be free. It's with a good-looking imp- mascot. That's all I'm saying. Tyler with the impersonations, even if they all sound like Jimbo Fish, like ah, horny Jimbo. Now wait a second. <laughs> You're stealing my bit. <laughs> Tyler, I want to talk though about Connor Stallion. Uh, Connor Stallions, because I can't believe that's his name. It, it's a real name. That's not a real name. For those of you who do not know, we don't know what's real or not real about this person, and we're about to do an investigation because this person is Michigan adjacent. His name is now uh, on, uh, on all of our minds because this keeps getting funnier and weirder, and Harbaugh might have to flee Michigan and uh, in, in disgrace because what might be uncovered here uh, has the possibility of being a great combination of funny and embarrassing. And every day there is something new that comes out and teams are cooperating and yesterday the athletic posted a piece that featured photos of someone who was purported to be connor stallions and jim McElwain had a press conference addressing these photos saying we don't know who that person is on the sideline <laughs> connor stallions was not credentialed this is a central michigan game that's yes. where jim McElwain is now. right now on your screens you're seeing someone in a very poor disguise a central michigan hat and sunglasses at, on, night. On, at night on the sideline. And there are additional photos of him going as far to fist pump when there's a play that goes in central Michigan's direction. This is allegedly Connor Stallions, the Michigan staffer that has been their spy of sorts. Now, if you're looking at these photos, you probably want a little bit more evidence. But we have for you a face morph, and it would appear that the person in question the mysterious Central Michigan Chippewa staffer might indeed be Connor Stallions. So this was at Michigan State. It was, I believe, a season opener, Central Michigan at Michigan State. So it makes sense that he was there. One of the funnier parts is there were a lot of plays that went over towards that sideline. And if we saw allegedly Connor Stallions, every time would pull his hat down or hide his face (laughs) or try to avoid the camera when he knew that it was going to be in his direction, if that was him, which I believe it was. It was also a Friday night game. And the Michigan game was the next day, so it was feasible that he could have been at both. And the fact that, like, Central Michigan is still not sure who it is, even though, like, no one's come forward yet and been like, that's me, guys. Like, obviously it's me. So, yeah, like, no, that's I think not that guy. That was, me. That was, that was, I was credentialed that day. Is that Norton? It, it does, it does <laughs> give pause. It, ju- it also just seems so absurd that this could, like, there's so many cameras on the sidelines. Like, how do you, how would you get away with this? I love but. how oversized his hat is. <laughs> and it just looks like such a bad disguise. There is an honor amongst thieves when it comes to this stuff. And a lot of people would prefer that you don't dig into this stuff because a lot of coaches, from my, from whispers that I've heard, do something like this. But having someone not dress. This. No, no, wait, no, 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 not no. this. So, I said Something but like this. this is not this is unprecedented. Having someone disguised as a saffer on it. another team is it. a whole new level. I'll bite. Why? What possible gain does he have from infiltrating Central Michigan staff? Yeah. Well, he was stealing the Michigan State signs yeah. allegedly. If this, if this Michigan would be State. him, Could and they he? played Michigan State last weekend, so that would be, I presume, the reason that people were like looking into this in the first place because someone's watching this. Now going back and saying, like, where, you know, was this guy on the sidelines at other games and can we catch him on film? He he couldn't have done that. Like from a regular seat in the stands, he well, did. That's, that's yeah. part of the the allegations. But this this would be perhaps his greatest caper. There was a Bruce Feldman story that came out this morning where he interviewed a bunch of anonymous, well, a, a bunch of college football coaches anonymously and asked them to, like, say their honest opinion about this like is this something that you think is a big deal is this something that you do should this be taken seriously and it did seem like the overwhelming majority of college football coaches do think that this is like so far not not necessarily the central michigan thing because we don't know if that's him or not but what we do know so far it is a really big deal and it has not it's not something that every team does they don't all electronically steal signals and they're not all flying staff across the country to like videotape from the opposing sidelines so 
whether you believe that or not, because I think a lot of college football coaches have a reason to lie about it or to at least like pretend like they're, you know, holier than thou situation. Uh, they do all seem fairly pissed off about it still. So Nebraska's playing Michigan State this weekend. If you're Nebraska, you 100 percent hire someone that looks like that to be on your <laughs> sideline. Right. Like everyone in the Big Ten should be getting someone that looks sort of like that dressed up on their sidelines just to get it on film just to bring down Michigan, yeah. right? So he allegedly went to every Big Ten stadium except for one, and I know for a fact he did not go to an Iowa game. Wow. He was like, we don't need those signs. Yeah. We're good. I don't even think they have signs. We're fine, Jim. We don't need it. It's either paper, rock, or scissors. Yeah. The sign they have is a stop sign. It just says punt. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Can we f just for a second, though, like we can sit here and talk about all uh, how common is this? How common is it not? How much of an advantage does it give you? How much does it not? But the sheer brazenness of having someone in a disguise on a staff he doesn't belong to is one kind of hilarious. But the next kind of hilarious is... How does no one on Jim McElwain's staff look to their right or left and ask, who is this person yeah. who is standing here uh, with us? I could totally see it happening. It, it, when your staffs are all locked in on a game doing their job, if you look at a college football sideline, there's a bunch of people that are in the background wearing team-issued polos, and you don't know what they do. They could be filling up Gatorade bottles. They could be analysts hired. When you're locked in on a game, someone wearing a set they could be staffers from the administration you don't know you figure if someone has a credential and they're wearing a central michigan polo someone gave them access yeah there, there's tons of people on the sidelines that like lucy and i have both been on the sidelines of college football games and you just kind of blend in with the crowd at a lot of them. you work in the media you, you get a media credential it's not a look at me but that's fine i'll take it i'm very i'm very cool there's a lot of people on most of these big college football staffs and Little baby. if you're a white guy with a hat it's kind of easy yeah. to blend in <laughs> lucy and i might stand out if you're if you're watching somebody on the sidelines and you're not focused on the game let me know so we can fire that person yeah. you're supposed to be focused on the game buddy that's right don't be looking around don't, hey who's this guy hey don't worry about that guy we're about the 11 guys right there i like this thank I, you i like the idea of the staffer that finds out like hey that guy's not on our staff and Jim McElwain's like, thank you. Also, clear your locker. See ya. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> the other thing I liked from the Bruce Feldman article that came out in The Athletic was that a, a few reactions were like, yeah, this is pretty crazy, but like, it's actually even crazier that they got caught. This is really sloppy. Like, we're all doing something like this, but this is by far the sloppiest okay, yeah, operation. Well, so, we, this well, guy had a manifesto, Dan. Uh, what, tell me do, about you, this. do you think this is the only time he tried this approach? No. Because I need more photos there in different sure regalia. 500 pages was the manifesto. What do we know about the manifesto? He wrote a manifesto yeah. with his idea of like how to make Michigan. Yeah. This was uh, Richard Johnson from Sports Illustrated put this article out last week. Very good reporting. Everyone should go read it. Yeah. Uh, it was a manifesto about like his ideas for the Michigan football yeah. program. And the word manifesto alone, yeah. in, com mm. in combination with the state of Michigan, should yeah. alarm people. Yeah. He hates democracy and gluten. Can we please put up on the screen just the photo, because I did not know that Jim McElwain was the Central Michigan coach, the most famous moment in Jim Come McElwain's on. career. Stop. Now, you know this isn't him. That's I him. I do know it's not <laughs> him. <laughs> what? Yeah, that's him. It's, can we have I the same face morph. <laughs> face morphing over his ass only? <laughs> We're going to need to do that investigation. Um, Hell yeah. This is, uh, this is not Jim McElwain. <laughs> uh, we are told, reportedly, allegedly, McElwain has denied this in the most serious of fashions, but this is and also he and was asking a press conference. Are you naked on a shark? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Caleb Presley of Barcel did the, the greatest in-depth reporting on this I have ever found out. Uh, I've ever seen on it, and they actually found the guy that was on on the shark. And Jim McElwain. There's a great moment where Jim McElwain shakes that guy's hand. He goes over to Central Michigan, and Jim McElwain finally meets this person that is actually on the shark. And that man, of course was Connor Stallion in a disguise. <laughs> it's obvious this isn't the shark picture isn't Jim McElwain because a college football coach is not going to have that good of a tan. Yeah. They're always crouton. They're yeah. not anywhere with their shirt off. And this guy's got a very obvious <laughs> ass to shirt tan line. How does that man feel? The man
man who's not Jim McElwain. He looks happy there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there. He, there. Was, a, he was a good that, sport about yeah, it. Yeah, but once that, okay, but maybe he was a good sport about when it. When you're naked on a shark, I don't think that you really care, Dan. <laughs> you may not. I do wonder, though, if people who love that person wonder uh, to themselves whether they want to see all of him uh, go viral. How's the shark feel? No one asked that question. I think he feels great. They're in second place in their division in the MAC right now. They feel a little rough to the touch, by the way. Yeah. Big win over Northern Illinois last night. Yeah, man, how did the shark feel emotionally? Oh, yeah. the, the, the shark, and this part gets overlooked because it takes a dark turn. Uh, the shark is dead. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry.